it was my good friend Jason who said, what's the damage? And I realized something. That's something a dad would say. Uncle Rob is back. Cousin Jer, he's not with us. He's probably out mowing that beautiful lawn of his. That's okay, because we've got another project. This is a little different for all y'all. This has got the engine in the back. They're gonna say mid-engine, but let's be honest, as far as I'm concerned, it's rear engine. Best part about this car, let's get right to the brass tacks. That is the two golf club bags that can fit in the trunk. They redesigned the car just for us, okay? Now the sad part about this car is it's dirty. We're gonna go ahead and clean it up. She is uh, cleaning up pretty dang good. I don't exactly consider myself an outlaw, but some people might disagree. I think it's about time. This bad boy is busted out again. We're gonna go bigger this year. I still can't believe that they did this, uh, but gotta keep up the persona. Time to make this poster even more important. While my alter ego Bob might enjoy his Corvettes and wearing hats, I don't need to. Even though I survived last month's horrible attempt at giving myself a haircut, my hair has grown back. And thanks to Keeps, I have a lot more hair than I would at this age. By 35 years old, two out of every three men will experience male pattern baldness. And thanks to Keeps, you get to focus on keeping the hair that you have. Their website and their entire process removes all the fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the process of finding hair loss solutions. There are a variety of solutions available, including the drops that you can put in your hair every morning and night. If you're interested in learning more about hair loss prevention, Keeps is offering 50% off of your first order if you go to Keeps.com com slash Rob Dom to learn more. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Rob Dom. This is what sadness looks like. 1001 puzzle pieces. Uh, I don't even know what half of this stuff is and that's being completely honest with you. Obviously you've got the clear indication of what these things are. That was at some point a radiator. That is a tank for the windshield wiper fluid. Uh, obviously all the windshield wiping mechanisms, a frunk, fla uh, plastic fascia, but then we start getting into the weird stuff. Not yet, just kidding. Now this one is kind of a cool package and I'm assuming it's the same way on both sides, even though the other side is no longer together. This set is all a fan, a radiator, and an air conditioning condenser. So that's uh, rinse and repeat on both sides. The fan on the other side is right there, air conditioning condenser, and radiator, all those. I wonder where its containment unit is. This is the air filter, and I don't mean engine air filter, I mean passenger compartment air filter. Thankfully that's only got 200 miles on it. But then we're starting to run into the scraps. This is a frunk piece. <laughs> but then I, I'm impressed that somebody actually had to design all this because most of this stuff would never make it back into the car if it's gonna be a race car. This piece, I think it's a pretzel. <laughs> it was a pretzel? I don't know. We're gonna have to find where the things are that are ripped off on it and match that up. This is kind of cool to see that, okay, it's just bar stock type of aluminum, just quickly but properly welded together. So that we can remake. But again, we don't know the dimensions of those things. Some of the really cool things about this car, there are two of these this unit right here, and it's in really good shape. I don't think it was at the front of the car, but who knows, there's that one, and then that one right there. So I, I don't know what those are, but probably the most fascinating thing is, this is the front crash bar. That looks in way better shape than it should be. I got a little sensor or something right there on both sides. So that took, had to take most of the impact, but looks in, it looks pretty recognizable. A lot of random shit there. Sadly, one of the two headlights, the previous owner gave the good one to a company that retrofits them or something like that. Unfortunately, he gave them everything. So that's easily a couple thousand dollars, maybe at least a thousand plus. I don't know why the other side mirror is off the car. They were both off the car, 
at some point. This wheel well, you know, f inner fender, both of those liners, I, I always take those off on of my cars, but I'm going to try and keep them on this one. The one's missing, kind of the venting from the front of the car. But we're going to go ahead and play Jenga in reverse and try to put all of this back together. What my goal is, is to take all the parts that I know are good, which are few, very few, and then try and build it backwards from there. Very interesting. The car is telling me a lot of different errors, and because of the errors, I figured out that this car is more function than I had realized. There are two front-facing cameras on this, and of course they're disconnected, so it said, hey, front-facing camera not connected or something along those lines. I don't think those cameras come in the lower packages, but that definitely works with the track mode on the Z51 to record your position and all that sort of cool race stuff. I want to connect all of the electronics back to the car and see if we can clear any of the error messages and really see if the car will come back to 100%. So we start going through all the salvageable good parts and this is one of my favorites so far. This is a solid chunk of glass. It's got to be some sort of projection piece for the headlight, but it's actually like beefy. You can hear that the thing's solid, so we're going to keep that safe. If the headlight's 100 pieces, this front bumper is 1,000. <laughs> I'm interested to see though if the Z51 front splitter is still okay. There's three pieces here. You know, there's some. Let's try and salvage this now. It's, yeah, it's damaged, yeah. but we can fix it. Like, for the sake of what it is, it's a consumable item to me. <laughs> Maybe this size. Like whatever these clips are supposed to be connected to aren't connected to anything, they're just spinning. Yeah, it looks smaller than a 10. Okay, so there is the Z51 package. I just wanna break this down so it's more useful. Let's see, this should, wow, those are all just ripped off. as much of this as possible. This camera is broken. So look at this. The lens on it is busted. So sad. That's gonna be like, what, a million dollars? Okay, we're definitely gonna take all of these off. We have, this is the only wiring problem we have, and that looks very clean to fix. separates these two. <laughs> There's not a salvageable piece on this. We can salvage it for more, even more uh, fasteners. This wiring harness inside here is very salvageable. Yeah, so we have the front little harness. As it was just pointed out, she did take some serious damage right there. That was very repairable. I'm not too worried about it, especially since we'll be able to tell exactly which wires. We're not talking about hundreds of wires here. That's a broken connector. We're gonna keep this front bumper. We'll probably put it up somewhere because I have all the bumpers from all my cars. What we have now is this group of pieces. Looks like some sort of plane wreckage. That's really all that's left that is good. Hood struts. Those are interior pieces. These two things for each side, battery tray, the tank, windshield wipers, and then again, I don't know what these are. We'll find out throughout the video, but that seems to be all the pieces that are not damaged at all. We did luck out that we've got one, one of these. And I think, which one is this? It would either be this like that, oh, it is this one. Cause there's the screw that holds it in. Looks a lot better now. 
Thankfully, this screws in from the top. And since we have the other one already in, we're looking for these type of bolts in the baggies. This piece is gone, this piece is gone. That's okay, but I wanna show you guys something that we just found. <laughs> the dealership forgot to install these brake ducts. They're the Z51 package brake ducts. And I, I remember reading somewhere that the dealership needs to install them. Well, what perfect situation where they forgot to do that. So that's probably what, $1,000 in parts <laughs> right there. We did find these in the mix of everything. That must be the battery hold down. We're looking for Torx heads. Might as well catalog what parts are where. Just found these pieces under the seat. They had slipped under there. This is like Christmas. I was really getting bummed out that this stuff was just gone for no reason. So that'll go back in there. And then this was actually really upsetting. It's like leather, it's a nice piece. Found that as well. And that would go in there. Ah, oh, that feels so good. So we can't win them all. This one, though, we do. We get this one. Yeah, there we go. Everything seems to be coming out of the woodwork in the bottom of the car. I think these are the bolts we're looking for for the other side mirror. Now, interesting enough, I understand why they took these off. when they, had, they were on a mission to figure out the car. They weren't on a mission to fix the car. They took all these parts off to get inside of the doors, which I don't exactly, I don't know why uh, there, that wasn't necessary, but we're here now and at least they did have all the parts in the car. They broke this, a little bummer. This is a nice little like leather wrap thing. They broke that. So now, now that the dust has settled and everybody's gone for the day, I finally got a chance to look at the car carefully. And there are a couple of really positive things that have come from this. First of all, the core subframe, at least with all the basic quick measurements, is actually pretty square. My biggest fear was how this comes out at an angle, but that is actually that piece itself. So that can be bent back. That's aluminum, and it's very easy to recreate at worst. The two major arms both have slightly different challenges, and this one's by far the easier one. But what I do want to point out is Corvettes love their glue bonding process, and that's the telltale sign here. I'm looking for where the bonding process has separated. And it actually does show its ugly head on this one, there, and right down there. It's separated because that piece bent in. This side, though, is much better off. That bend is right at the piece right here. So it provides, that creates a couple challenges. So we'll, we'll go with the easy one first. This one is bent here. So it's away from the bonding and the screwing and all that, which gives me a couple advantages. We can cut this section out because if any of you think that you can bend this back, it's aluminum, you're out of your mind. It'll bend and we'll try it. But realistically, that section is compromised. So my thoughts are we cut the bad section out and then we weld a plate on the top, on the sides, but this side keeps us the correct length. So once we bend it back, this keeps the exact length and all is good there. Whereas on, on this side, not so fortunate because this is right at this seam. So we'd have to cut a new section or you'd have to weld from here to here. That's, that's less than ideal because there's all the bonding glue in there. I want to make it as simple and straight. I want to make it as simple and as straightforward as pro I want to make it as simple and straightforward as possible. So I'm currently thinking we do cut a section of that out, but we cut it here, bending this part straight, and then trying to give ourselves basically a tab to weld onto. Again, this one's going to be a lot easier to bend because we can apply force from here to there. This is very structurally rigid, so bending it and applying force that way will be very easy. These pieces are my other challenge. You can see they're both doing weird things. They, I think they're doing weird things naturally, but what shows me they're off is again the bonding process right here. You can see where they separated. What's very interesting about that is it separated in that corner until 
it got to the area with the screws. So the separation's back here. That is even worse on this side. Yep, right there. This area also provides a couple weird challenges as it separated from here to here. That actually cut that metal. That is split. This one, much simpler. It's bent back, so we'll bend it forward. Some small things like that worth trying because at worst, well, well, you can replate it. I looked over this very carefully, not with the eye of a person who owns it, but as a person who has to repair it and drive it and potentially go faster. None of these bonding pieces here are compromised. So this rigidity from here, 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 you know, nice triangles, the rotary speaking to us, all of this is really solid. So we have a good subframe, we have good brakes, we have a good lift system, the coolant lines that are made out of aluminum did get bent a little bit on the side here. Those can be suggested back forward, like this one. You can see it's bent down and over. What I think we'll do in the next video is attempt to fix it, but also attempt to shortcut these coolant lines, let the car run up to temp. There's a third radiator so we can test it and see if we can start clearing all the error codes on the car. So all of these things that are not plugged in, short of the camera is <laughs> completely destroyed. We're going to go ahead and plug everything in and try and get the car to clear all of its codes.